Tonight, we're also bringing you the very latest on a heartbreaking story, this one out of Anderson County. Yeah, an infant has died at an upstate daycare. It happened at a family-run center on Youth Center Road Friday afternoon. Tonight, we're learning more about who that child is and what caused the death. As 7 News reporter Addie Hampton has been digging for answers on this all day. The death of a three-month-old baby at an in-home daycare due to asphyxiation. Today, a Belton family is grieving the loss of their child taken too soon. Tate William Kirby died Friday after falling face down onto a plastic crib mattress. Anderson County Coroner Don McCown says the caregiver put the baby down to nap, swaddled in a blanket on his side. She checked in once. The child was fine. The second time, about an hour later, she found him face down, unresponsive. I just wanted Kelly Wren to be the last one. Catherine Martin has been through this nightmare. Her three-month-old died due to unsafe sleep at a Greenville home daycare in 2014. I know how this family feels. I know the phone call. I know the hospital. For two years, she's worked to make South Carolina daycare safer for children in honor of her daughter. And while that's still her mission, Monday she just wanted to be a comfort to take Kirby's parents. I just want them to know that you're not alone. When Kelly Wren died, I thought I'm the only mom who has ever been through this, and there's no one to reach out to, but there is. The coroner says no charges will be filed against the caregiver. She was up to date on her license and was also taking care of Tate's older brother at the home. This was all a, quote, unfortunate accident. Catherine Martin knows what the next days, weeks, and months will feel like, but says there's hope. To this specific family, we, we just want to do the right thing and we want to help you. In Greenville, Addie Hampton, 7 News. According to his obituary, Tate William Kirby will be laid to rest tomorrow with Belton First Baptist Church. That's where his father works as a youth pastor. His mother is a teacher with Anderson District 2 schools and they ask for prayers in this very difficult time.